I've got a question for you guys. How many remember this sentence word for word? This Disney DVD is enhanced with Disney's Fast Play. Your movie and a selection of bonus features will begin automatically. To bypass Fast Play, select the menu button at any time. Fast Play will, will begin, begin in a moment. I'm willing to bet at least some of you just recited that entire thing verbatim along with me. If you did, you probably had the same childhood that I did, probably not allowed to see R-rated movies, and thus amassed a very large Disney DVD collection. Yes, back before the days of Disney+, Plus, if you wanted to watch a Disney movie, you had to buy a physical copy. Or pirate it, but I would never do something like that. Anyway, if you're at all familiar with early 2000s Disney DVDs, you're probably also familiar with the concept of second discs. After you're done with disc 1, which contained the actual movie, you could flip it over to reveal a second disc. These housed additional content, such as games, behind the scenes, developer commentary, and other assorted bonus features. One notable example of Disney's second discs, and one that I messed around a lot with as a kid, is the Aladdin Premium Edition, released October 5th, 2004. I got that release date from the DVD fandom page. Yes, there is a DVD fandom wiki page, because the internet is a beautiful place. <laughs> but anyway, let's crack this thing open and take a look inside. The case holds both disc 1 and disc 2, and you can find out what's on them if you break out just the worst pamphlet ever. Seriously, who designed this? Ah, screw this, let's just jump straight onto the DVD. Alright, so here we are on the main menu, which has three options for us. Index, which just shows us what's on the disc. Very exciting. Moving on to Backstage Disney, which offers a pretty cool short about the making of Aladdin. Hello, I'm Leonard Maltin, and I'll be your host for A Diamond in the Rough, The Making of Aladdin. I want to tell you about the three different ways you have to enjoy this material. Your first option... Uh, your wish is uh, like I said, there's only one option on this disc, and it's games and activities. The first game here is Aladdin's Magic Carpet Adventure, which the pamphlet describes as thrilling and gravity-defying. I'll be the judge of that. Are you ready for the ride of your life? Yes. We've got to rescue Jasmine and we need your help. Okay, so now that we know what this game is, I think it's time for a little confession. While I played this game a lot as a kid, I never actually finished it. I never actually got to see the ending of this game. Which, if you think about it, is a little weird, considering this was presumably a game made for kids. So it couldn't have been that hard. But I'm going to make you guys a promise, okay? We're going to reach the ending of this game today, together. This game's ending has been evading me for over a decade, but today, I'm gonna see it. Let's do this. So, researching this game was a little tough. The credits are really bare bones, it's just two black screens of text, mostly just crediting the voice work. This game does have an IMDB page, but it doesn't really tell you anything that the credits didn't. The only name in the credits that's not attributed to voice work is a special thanks to Eric Goldberg. If you didn't know, Eric Goldberg is an animator and voice actor that worked on many Disney movies during the Disney Renaissance, most notably Aladdin where he was the main animator for the character of the genie. So I kept thinking, God, I want the genie. Please give me the genie, please give me. So I go in and see these guys, and they go, so we're thinking about giving you the genie. And I go, mm, yeah, okay, I think I, can. I think I could do that. And, you know, we part company, and, and I walk out the door, and go, yes, I got the genie, and realize that I locked myself out of my car, and they had to call security to get me in, so. Robin Williams, the voice actor for the genie, was originally hesitant to be part of the film, but was convinced when Goldberg animated the genie reciting one of Robin's stand-up routines. But first, before we do the play, I'd like to talk about the very serious subject of schizophrenia. No, he doesn't! Shut up! Let him talk! One of the great thrills of my life was actually watching Robin Williams laugh at my animation. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> now I know Goldberg is only listed here as special thanks and not animator. And I know that even if he did work on this project as an animator, he probably didn't do it all by himself. But the disc didn't bother to credit anybody else, so that's what I've been forced to conclude. As far as voice talent goes, everyone from the 1992 film reprises their roles in the second disc. Scott Wagner as Aladdin, Linda Larkin as Jasmine, Jonathan Freeman as Jafar, and Gilbert Gottfried as Iago. Notably absent from this list is Robin Williams as Genie, possibly because of his feud with the Walt Disney Company, watch Lindsay Ellis' video for more information on that. Possibly not, but... Yeah, for whatever reason, we don't get to hear Robin Williams on this disc, and that's a shame. But with that history out of the way, let's jump straight into the game. From the shifting sands of time, in a mystical land of eternal enchantment, comes the brightest star you'll ever see in a thousand and one Arabian Nights. Die! Where am I? And why am I holding this gravy boat? So, yeah, this game is a crossover with The Lion King, because... 
why not, I guess. It's pretty superfluous. Timon here doesn't really do anything of note, and it's not like they thought of a compelling reason for him to be here, he's just here. Jasmine needs us! Jafar's put Jasmine back in the hourglass and we have to find her! What, just like that? No explanation as to how he got out of his lamp, or got out of the Cave of Wonders, or how he got Jasmine back into the hourglass somehow. No explanation of where Aladdin was during all this, just, yep, kidnapped the princess, gotta go save her. This is like Bowser and Princess Peach level storytelling. Oh yeah, he kidnapped the princess, he does that sometimes. Guess we gotta go save her now or something. Yeah, even for a kid's DVD game that nobody played, this is a pretty lazy excuse. But anyway, here we are at our first piece of gameplay, deciding whether to go to the mountains or the desert. Well, I live in Utah, and so I'm pretty sick of mountains, so let's go to the desert. As we fly over the desert sands, you'll notice something about this game. It looks... bad. Even for a DVD game, it looks bad. I mean, this was 2004. We had animated films like... The Polar Express, and... Shark Tale. Okay, this actually looks great. I don't know why I was complaining. That was weird. Took the words right out of my mouth. After we fly through the desert, we reach another crossroads. It keeps trying to get me to go to the mountains, but I refuse, so let's click on the Cave of Wonders. Wonder what's through here? Woohoo! You know, at this point, the whole having a pet monkey thing might be turning out to be more trouble than it's worth. But just like the original movie, the cave takes approximately 13 years to close its mouth, so we escape just fine. And quickly arrive at another sign. Let's choose this uh, wooden door looking thing. Freedom! Buy your freedom! It's practically free! It's a chain store. Get it? Um, no, that made no sense. I don't want to get lost in a place like this! He says he's flying through the most linear tunnel I've ever seen. This section of the game might actually be my favorite though. I mean, we got moving walls with spikes, snakes throwing arrows, a fire pit, swinging blades. Although it does make me think that this would work better as a ride than a game. Like a roller coaster, one of those simulated rides with screens, like Star Tours. Watching it on a DVD is kind of cool, but you're just left staring there at the screen waiting to play the actual game again. But once we get through that death trap, we're greeted with another crossroads. And now seems like a good chance to explain that little scarab icon down there. There are four of them in the game, and each leads to a little mini-game to get a clue as to how to save Jasmine. These mini-games range from pretty easy, to complete random chance, to downright impossible. Take this one here, which is my favorite, and in my opinion the only good mini-game here. There's a lamp encased in an ice cube, and you have to guess which of the four lamps above it is an exact match. It's pretty easy, but there is legitimate skill involved, unlike these other three over here. These two are complete guessing games. In this one, you have to pick the basket that you think Abu is hiding in. There's no sound cues you can use, no hints as to where he is, just pick one of the three and hope you're right. In this one, you have to bet on a camel that you think is going to win the race. Again, it's complete RNG. There's no way to know which camel is going to win, you just have to take a guess. And I guess this would be fine if you could just retry the minigame as many times as you needed, but you can't. Once it kicks you back to the main screen, you cannot go back and try again. You have to exit the entire game and re-enter it. That means to get all four clues, you have to play the four minigames perfectly back to back with no mistakes, which seems oddly punishing for a game made for kids. That just leaves the fourth minigame, which... You're right, Abu. This is no time for jokes. Jasmine needs us. Good thing I know this is a trick wall. Just choose the right combination of three stones, and the wall will slide open. Okay, first of all, how do you know that? And secondly, the right combination of three stones? What does that mean? I originally thought that these tally marks over here were telling you the order of stones, but no. This minigame stumped me as a kid, and I still have no idea what to do here as an adult. And judging by the gameplay videos I found on YouTube, I am not alone in that. Great. Looks like we'll have to figure it out on our own. Sorry, better luck next time. Let's go! Looks like we'll have to figure it out on our own. Sorry, better luck next time, let's go! Okay, all my complaints aside, you don't actually need to play any of these mini games in order to beat the game. And you also don't need all four of them to see what it's trying to depict. I mean, just take the clue you get for winning the one good mini game. Like, we all know what that is, right? Anyway, since I still refuse to go to the mountains for some reason, that just leaves the palace. At the end of the video clip, we're graded with two options, going back to the Cave of Wonders or this hourglass icon. I don't know why we'd ever go back to the cave, so let's click on the only other option. Watch out, Abu! Stay back! I don't think he's here to welcome us. 
Here's what you need to do so we can pass. When the music begins, you'll have to select the arrows that match the ones you see coming out of the flute. Go ahead, give it a try. Well, that's going to be a challenge since I'm currently recording this game off my PC so I can actually record it. And the thing about computers is they don't come with remotes. Luckily for me though, this mini game, like all the other ones, is completely unnecessary. All you have to do is click on the hourglass again and it lets you right into the palace. Jasmine! Aladdin, hurry! Time's running out! I'll never let it run out on you! Aladdin! Welcome back to Who Wants to Marry a Princess? The answer is Jafar! He's run off, and now you're the only one who can save Jasmine from the hourglass of death! Go ahead and choose your object, but choose wisely, because like sands through the hourglass, so are the seconds left in her life. Well, as you guys all know, I only got one clue, so I have no idea what to pick here. Let's just click on the birdhouse. Johnny, show him what's behind door number one. Hey, some of us are trying to take a bird bath here. He's a dirty bird, all right. That was weird. All right, I'll stop messing around and pick the obvious thing. Bada bing, bada boom. You saved me. I knew you'd come. But was it really necessary to make all those stops? I mean, thank you. Mm. Mm. Scarab. What? You think that's disgusting? <laughs> Where do you see this? That's what I got. Yuck. Yeah, so that was Aladdin's Magic Carpet Adventure. The ending that's been evading me for over a decade was actually pretty disappointing. You don't even get to see Jafar. I guess he was out on a coffee break or something. And your guess is as good as mine on how I wasn't able to finish this game as a kid. None of the minigames are necessary, you don't have to go to every location, you don't have to do the snake game correctly, and you get all the chances in the world to guess the final clue. I guess I was just a dumb kid. So now let's move on to the next game, Inside the Genie's Lamp. Welcome to the supreme, the sublime, the sensational lamp of a thousand wonders. See for yourself the luxuriant interiors that a world famous genie used to call home. Yeah, so remember the genie's line in the original movie about Phenomenal cosmic powers! <laughs> it turns out he's full of crap because this lamp is huge. Also, yes, in this game we are treated to the voice of the late Robin Leach, who was the host of Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous for most of his run. Believe it or not, this gorgeous, beautiful bedroom is on board the private aircraft of Adnan Khashoggi. But then, what else would you expect? Robin's voice rains down from on high as we tour this lamp, acting as sort of a real estate agent explaining how awesome this lamp is. And hey, at least we got the voice of one Robin on this disc. So Robin presents us with a map of the lamp. Map of the lamp, map of the lamp, map of the lamp, map of the lamp, I'll stop. I'm just gonna go clockwise, starting with the garden. The water garden provides a private retreat for quiet reflection. Yes, don't you love how quiet and peaceful this garden is? It's really the best spot for some quiet reflection, wouldn't you agree? Let's check out this lake down here. I have so many questions. Oh yeah, and if you click on this river down here, a boat with no passengers sails into the pond, sails up this waterfall with no motor somehow, and then presumably falls off the edge of the world? Again, I have so many questions. Who is this boat for? Does anyone ride it? How does it move? All right, the garden's starting to make my head hurt, so let's move on to the bedroom. Wait, hold up, what? What was the point of that? Just in case you're stashing 14 kilos of cocaine in your mattress and the cops knock on the door? I didn't like that. I didn't, I didn't like that. I want to move on, please. Okay, first of all, that's terrifying. Let's click on it. You know, of all the places they could have done that, that was not the worst option. If you click on the pool itself, you actually get a pretty cool water show. But aside from that, there's not a whole lot to do here. Let's go to the kitchen. 
satisfy that midnight at the Oasis snack craving with a succulent selection of delicacies from around the world. Yeah, and by delicacies from around the world, they just mean a bunch of different colored popsicles. Hey, what's this? Save the date. Save the date? I didn't know dates were an endangered species. Ha. Huh. <gasps> nice song. All I needed was some kettle drums. All right, the last place to go here is the dining room. This regal dining room table expands and contracts to seat from two to two thousand of your closest personal genies. If by two thousand you mean twelve. There's also a disco ball here, what everyone wants in their dining room. And there's also a Mickey Mouse here's cap, because isn't Disneyland awesome? Don't you want to go to Disneyland? Hey, hey kids watching this, go tell your parents you want to go to Disneyland. But yeah, that's about it for this game. All it is is clicking on stuff and watching what they do. Not super exciting, but there are some good moments in it. Final game here is the Three Wishes game, Your Fortune Revealed. This was the game that I played the least of as a kid, mostly because it's freaking terrifying. Come closer. Something about the dark alley where it takes place, the rhythmic motions of this plastic Jafar's mouth, the freaking breathing. <laughs> Did they really just get Jonathan Freeman into the recording studio and instruct him to go... <sighs> I like to think that's what they did. There's not a whole lot to say about this game, it's by far the most simple of the games on here. You just push a button and watch a coin roll down the track. If it doesn't make it in, you try again. If it makes it into Jafar's mouth, you make a wish, and a card pops up telling you the status of said wish. It's not really a game as much as just a magic 8-ball in DVD form. If it lands in Jafar's mouth, then you can make your wish, got it? And since he's got a big mouth, your chances are good. So go on, give it a try. There's no strategy either as far as I can tell. You can't time your button press or anything. It's all just completely random. Your wish is granted with obvious regret. <laughs> So yeah, that was the Aladdin Premium Edition second disc. In conclusion... That was weird.